Uh, good morning, sir. Can you see and hear us? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, may I call Paul Patterson, please? Yeah. And repeat after me, I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Good morning, Mr. Patterson. You know, my name is uh, Jason Beer, and I ask questions on behalf of the inquiry. Can you give us your full name, please? The full name, William Paul Patterson. Thank you for coming to give evidence to the inquiry today. Uh, you have been scheduled to give evidence today for many months now, and today, um, I, I wish to be clear, is not a rerun of the evidence that you gave to the Business and Trade Committee on Tuesday of this week. Um, not least because many of the issues addressed in your evidence to that committee will be addressed to you when you return to give evidence in phases five and six of the inquiry. Do you understand? Yes. In that connection, um, those watching the proceeding should understand that simply because an issue is not addressed by Mr. Patterson today does not mean that it will uh, not be addressed with him in due course. The inquiry undertakes its work in a forensic manner only asking questions of witnesses when it's satisfied that all reasonably relevant material has been obtained so that questions can be put on a proper evidential foundation. So you are here today to give evidence primarily about the uh, issues that you address in your third witness statement, which concerns ARQ data. You understand that? Yes, I do. And in particular, the reliability of that data the use of it by Fujitsu and the post office, the provision of it to the post office in connection with criminal proceedings um, against sub-postmasters. Do you understand? Yes. I'm also going to ask you some questions about matters in your um, second witness statement. So can we start, please, by formally adducing the evidence in your second and third witness statements, not least so they can be made available to the public via the inquiry's website? Can we start with your second witness statement, please? You'll find that in tab um, A2 of your hard copy bundle. The URN for it is FUJ 0012-6035. It's dated the 29th of December 2022 and is 193 pages long, including its appendices. If you go to page 63, which is the last page of the statement itself. Uh, is that your signature? Yes, it is. And are the contents of that witness statement true to the best of your knowledge and belief? Yes, they are. Can we move to your third witness statement, please, which in your bundle is in tab A1. The URM for that is WITN 0665-0300. That witness statement is dated the 14th of September 2023, is 103 pages long, including its appendices. And if you turn to page 80, you should find your signature. Yes, is that your is. signature? And are the contents of that statement true to the best of your knowledge and belief? Yes, they are. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, before I ask you um, uh, questions of substance, this is the first occasion on which you've given oral evidence to the inquiry, and the first occasion on which a senior Fujitsu executive has given evidence to the inquiry. I know in your first witness statement, which we published back on the 2nd of December 2022, you um, gave an apology to sub-postmasters and that um, you said something to equivalent effect on Tuesday of this week uh, to Parliament. And since then, Fujitsu, as a corporation, issued a public statement. Is there anything that you would like to say in that regard now? Uh, yes, Mr. Beard, thank you. To the sub postmasters and their families, we apologise. Fujitsu apologises and is sorry for our part in this appalling miscarriage of justice. This inquiry is examining those events forensically over many, many decades, which involve many parties, not least Fujitsu and the post office with other organisations and individuals. We are determined to continue to support this inquiry and get to the truth wherever it lays. 
and at the conclusion of the inquiry and the guidance from this inquiry, engage with government on suitable contribution and redress to the sub-postmasters and their families. Thank you, Mr Beer. Thank you. Uh, can I start with your background then, please? You are a director of Fujitsu Services Limited, is that right? Yes, it is. Which I'm going to call Fujitsu. And I think your full title, um, at least according to the, uh, the internet and the Fujitsu webpage, is Corporate Executive Officer, EVP. Is that Executive Vice President? Yes, it is. And the co-CEO, is that Chief Executive Officer or um, Corporate Executive Officer? It's actually um, um, the first one, forgive me. Right, so Chief Executive Indeed Officer yes. for the Europe region. Indeed it is. So a director, an Executive Vice President and a Corporate Executive Officer for the Europe region. Thank you. Yes. Um, when did you um, join Fujitsu? In early 2010. And what was your first role and job title? Uh, I was hired into a sales role, a sales leadership role, and I was the sales leader for the private sector. And what did that job involve? Very much focused on new business selling to Fujitsu's customers uh, in the private sector, as was then. And what was your your title again? So head of sales for the private sector. We can clearly will confirm the individual titles um, correctly. The, did that role have any connection to or responsibility for the Horizon IT system? So subsequently, my role changed and my responsibility changed. I was in a sales or sales leadership role for the UK private sector, then including the public sector, and then that evolved into being a European head of sales role as well. Throughout that, um, certainly in the early part, in the middle part of that, my responsibility also included the selling of the contract, new contracts, to the post office. When was that? So approximately 2012, I think, 13, um, is when the post office new business selling responsibility came, to my, uh, came into my um, responsibility. So before that, 2012, did, you, did your job um, bring you into connection with um, the Horizon IT system in any way? I don't believe so. After 2012, what was the extent of your connection to the Horizon IT system? So my connection was to the post office. Um, we had a number of contracts with the post office, one of them being Horizon, uh, one of them being the uh, um, telecoms contract, so their home phone and broadband contract. And it was my team who were responsible for the sale of the uh, services associated with the new telecoms contract uh, and clearly any renewal or extension to the Horizon system um, subsequently. Did you remain in that role until you t took up your present position in 2019? Uh, no, I, um, that, that role changed, so I became um, a European head of sales and business development and uh, I did not have uh, a direct team involved in the post office then. So how long did your involvement with the post office last? I would... Uh, four years, five years. In that four to five year period, let's call it between 2012 and... Um, 2014, uh, sorry, 2016, 2017. Um, how um, regularly uh, were you dealing with issues concerning the Horizon IT system? So I wasn't dealing with uh, issues... Okay, dealing with the post office account insofar as it concerned uh, the Horizon IT system. So my engagement and my sales team's engagement was what was very much focused on the new business into the post office. Um, it wasn't dealing with the service delivery, albeit clearly at times um, in those conversations the post office may have asked me questions about um, um, service delivery and that would have been passed on to the relevant service delivery team. That was my um, next question. To what extent were you um, cited on issues or problems with service delivery? in that four to five year period, so far as Horizon was concerned? 
So I think in several different meetings with post office executives when we were discussing the changes to the contract, so I think in about 2012-13 they were looking to change the contract structure into a tower structure. In some of those meetings we would have definitely made some reference to problems given I was in the room and that would have been handed back into the uh, service delivery team. Uh, to your recollection, did any of those um, engagements concern um, data reliability, data integrity, or similar issues? Well, so in the pack that I've got for, in this supplementary pack, I think, for in, in today's uh, hearing, mm. um, there is a reference to uh, questions asked of me and a colleague by the CIO, which we passed on to, which was talking about that very point. Um, I'm not going to go into that in detail today. I just want to get an overview today for the purposes of the questions I'm going to ask you subsequently of your uh, the extent to which you knew of issues concerning Horizon before you became CEO in 2019 or whether you were coming to these issues completely afresh in 2019. What would be the answer to that? I, in 2019, in my appointment, I was, of course, aware that there were issues regarding prosecutions. It, clearly, there was the public uh, case as well. So I was, I was aware on a personal level there were issues with the uh, um, prosecutions. Uh, so I was aware of those, those topics. Before you became CEO in 2019? Yes. Okay. I think the email you're referring to, I'm not going to go into it in detail today, shows that you had some involvement in and were briefed about the second site investigations yes. and the impact of those on Fujitsu. Yes. Thank you. And so overall we shouldn't get the impression when we listen to your evidence in a moment that you came to all of the issues concerning data integrity, the provision of information and evidence by Fujitsu to the post office and post office prosecutions afresh when you became CEO in 2019. I joined, as, as we already discussed, uh, I joined in 2010 and um, certainly through my career inside the company, latterly, I've become more and more aware of, uh, of the issues and clearly during this inquiry becoming more and more aware uh, at a very detailed level. Can I turn to um, your second witness statement then, um, please? Um, FUJ uh, 0012 6035, and it will come up on the screen for you. Um, this is your second witness statement. You'll see at the top it's dated, as we've established already, the 29th of December uh, 2022, so 13 months ago or so. And if we look at um, paragraph three, paragraphs one and two are um, usual introductions, but paragraph three at the um, foot of the page, um, as noted in your first corporate uh, witness statement, you do not have first-hand knowledge of many of the matters set out in the statement. Um, you wish to reiterate at the outset how the information in the statement has been compiled you have been assisted by a team of individuals within Fujitsu and Morriston Forster. And they're the solicitors to, the, uh, to Fujitsu for the purposes of this inquiry, is that right? Correct. Uh, this is due to the vast amount of documentation and sources of evidence which have had to be reviewed for a period stretching over 25 years. Uh, this team has provided to me the documents which are referenced in this statement and exhibited at, and then you give some reference numbers, and you um, exhibit 640 documents to this witness statement, uh, and which are the principal source of my knowledge of this statement's um, contents. <coughs> and so the information in the statement that you're giving is principally drawn from documents that have been provided to you by your team, essentially? Correct. And then if we look at paragraph four, please. Uh, 
you say um, responses to questions set out in the statement are generally drawn from documentary sources. These documents have been exhibited and or are referenced. The responses provided in this second statement represent Fujitsu's current understanding of the information available. Given preparations for phase three were then still ongoing, it may be that Fujitsu will need to supplement this corporate statement as further material is identified and made available to core participants. Now I'm going to skip over paragraphs 5 to 189 of this witness statement, that's some 60 pages of the witness statement, which concerns phase three issues in the inquiry and about which we heard many weeks of evidence back at the end of 2022 and the beginning of 2023, so primary evidence from the witnesses concerned. Can we pick up, please, what you say on page 61 of the witness statement? At the foot of the page, please, page 61. That's it, knowledge and rectification of bugs. And this section of the statement, indeed right to the end of the statement, addresses Fujitsu's knowledge of and rectification of bugs in the Horizon system. Is that right? Correct. And you say, as explained in Fujitsu's opening statement, no complex IT system will ever be completely free of bugs, errors and defects, beds. Fujitsu's monitoring systems and processes seek to identify faults, log them as incidents, and then work to resolve them following the agreed incident management process. Fujitsu also relies on incidents being reported by postmasters directly or by Post Office Limited. Many thousands of incidents have been logged since the inception of Horizon. And then over the page, please, <coughs> or further down the page. Uh, paragraphs 100 and 91 and 192. In relation to the 29 bugs, errors and defects listed by Mr Justice Fraser in Appendix 1 to the Horizon Issues Judgment, the inquiry has asked Fujitsu to provide details relating to the identification, investigation, communication and resolu resolution of the bugs, errors and defects. In February 2021, Fujitsu helped to prepare a report for Post Office Limited in relation to the 29 bugs, errors and defects identified by Mr Justice Fraser, the BED or Bugs, Errors and Defects report. The Bugs, Errors and Defects report has been disclosed to core participants and is exhibited as your Exhibit 260. So the sequence of events, just so that we can get that clear and um, decode things, is Mr Justice Fraser produces his Horizon Issues Judgment that's also known as judgment number six, and that was in December 2019, correct? Correct. Um, 16th of December 2019, to be precise. That contained a number of findings of fact, both in the body of the judgment and in an appendix to the judgment called Appendix 1, which you reference here, as to the existence of bugs, errors and defects in the Horizon system. And that's both, is this right, Legacy Horizon and Horizon Online? I believe so. And he analyzes those 29 bugs, errors and defects uh, in 418 pages of his judgment, in Appendix 1 to his judgment, uh, amounting to some 105 pages of closely typed text. Then the next event is the event you refer to in February 2021, um, a, a report by Fujitsu to the post office. Uh, that's the 22nd of February 2021, so a year and three months after the judgment. Fujitsu writing a report to the post office. What do you understand the purpose of that report to have been? I'm not quite sure I un understand the question. So Mr Justice Fraser produces his judgment, mm -hmm. finds the existence of 29 bugs, errors and defects, he spends 105 pages analysing them, and then 13 months later, Fujitsu write a report to the post office about those 29 bugs, errors and defects. And I was asking, uh, what was your understanding of the purpose of the writing of that report? So in my 
in the company's second corporate statement, we lay out um, details on the 29. Yes, I'm going to come to that in a moment. Okay. I think it would... So I don't know, Mr. Beer, I'm afraid. I don't know. I haven't seen the physical report. It's one of the exhibits to your statement, number 260 there. I'm not going to display it at the moment. Uh, but I just want to understand when the judge has found the existence of these 29 bugs, why um, a year and a month later, Fujitsu is writing a report to the post office about those 29 bugs. So I don't know, Mr. Beer. Okay. Let's move on um, anyway. Uh, paragraph 193 of your witness statement. Uh, you say, in addition to the bugs, errors, and defects report, that's the February 2021 20, report, Fujitsu has set out in Appendix 1, and that's Appendix 1 to this very witness statement, a series of summaries addressing each of the 29 bugs, errors, and defects, and any sub issues identified within those classifications. The bugs, errors, and defects report and the summaries set out in Appendix 1 uh, seek to build on the technical appendix, that's Mr Justice Fraser, and have been prepared by reference to a variety of sources. These summaries are indicative of, amongst other things, the investigation of each issue, the resolution of each issue, communication with other parties, including Post Office Limited and wider management, and the impact on uh, branches. And then 194, please. The summaries in Appendix 1 are based on a review of contemporaneous documents, primarily in the form of pinnacles, peaks, and kells, that have been identified as relevant to the relevant bugs error, bug error or defect. The summary should be read in conjunction with these underlying records. So, uh, that can come down, thank you. Just to summarise, in Appendix 1 to this witness statement, you've set out 29 summaries relating to the 29 bugs, errors and defects found to have existed by Mr Justice Fraser, correct? Correct. I'm going to look through some um, uh, examples of those. I'm not going to go through all 29 in a moment. So we can see what they look like and uh, the kind of things that they tell us. But... All of this information, uh, would you agree, was available to Fujitsu, um, indeed to you, because it's in your witness statement, written in December 2022, but also earlier than that in the Bugs, Errors and Defects report of February 2021? Yes, because the information is there. That's how we produce the... Um produced the report, uh, we produced the documents in the second statement, correct? And so in terms of something you said at the beginning of the, um, your evidence today about um, the inquiry examining complex issues and the inquiry, uh, Fujitsu wanting to wait until essentially the inquiry has reported, in relation to this issue, and I'm not saying that uh, for a moment that the Fujitsu summaries of the bugs, errors and defects are um, complete or um, should be taken to be the final word on each bug, error or defect. But from Fujitsu's perspective, is this, is this right? As a company, um, for at the last couple of years, it, it has known of the existence of these bugs, errors and defects at a corporate level. Yes, in fact, all the bugs and errors have been known at one one level or not for many, many years, um, right from the very start of um, deployment of uh, of this system. There were bugs and errors and defects, which were which were well known to all parties. Actually, you agree, I think. Therefore, if we take the Fujitsu summaries read together with the bugs, errors and defects report as a baseline, it, it follows that at a senior level in the company for the last couple of years there has been corporate knowledge of the existence of these bugs. I have, I have known about these bugs because I've seen the report, yes, would be my answer. And so there's no need to wait for the conclusion of this inquiry 
to find out at least this information because it's already known to Fujitsu. Yes, correct, and it's in the statement, correct. Can we go to the examples then, please? I get to look at um, four or five of the 29 um, bugs. Can we start by looking at page 102 of the witness statement, please? And can we look at uh, page 102 and 103 at the same time, please? So that's not going to be possible. Um, I just wanted to get... Um, ah, thank you. This is what the appendices look like in your... Um, or to your witness statement. It lists the relevant bug error or defect. This one is bed two, the calendar square bug. And then there are a series of bullet points, sometimes less than this, sometimes more than this, setting out in very summary form Fujitsu's um, position on it. Is that right? Yes. And the bullet point that always um, uh, is first um, says documents relating to Fujitsu's knowledge rectification and communication of the issue, including Pinnacles, Peaks and Kells, are set out in Appendix 2, and then the relevant exhibit numbers are given. So it's taking us in the first bullet point off to the relevant exhibits, and here there are about um, 25, 317 to 342. Correct. And I'm not on each occasion going to go back and look at um, the underlying material. If we can just read through then um, uh, the calendar square bug. And you say a problem existed in Horizon whereby on occasion a lock was not released and a second process would then wait for a given time before it timed out and reported an error saying it could not proceed. The problem could occur in various places in the Horizon applications. In the initial occurrences, a reboot of the counter allowed the system to resume proper function with no data lost. And then the third bullet point, in some cases, the calendar square branch in particular, the lock problem caused data to be lost when carrying out transfers between different stock units, thereby causing um, receipts and payments mismatches. So this is a bug, would you agree, that um, has a um, real impact on, on balancing because uh, it causes <coughs> receipts and payments mismatches? Yes. And then uh, fourth bullet point, there appear to have been instances of these repost lock errors from at least September 2000, so we get the start date. And in this instance, a postmaster reported an error when trying to redeclare their cash. The call was discussed between various teams from Post Office and Fujitsu. And then you give um, some further examples of um, peaks. And then a known error log, fifth bullet point, you give the reference advise that restarting repost or rebooting the counter would resolve incidents where a message uh, reported a timeout waiting for lock. Some of these also led to receipts and payments mismatches, which after investigation were dealt with by the Fujitsu MSU team that raised, raising a BIMS report so that the post office could issue an error notice, later known as a transaction correction to the postmaster uh, to allow them to reconcile um, the accounts. Uh, BIM's report set out the progress to the resolution of a business incident. The post office was used the information from the BIM's report to carry out reconciliation or settlement. 
uh, it was identified that an error in the underlying ESHA repost software caused the lock problem. The issue was raised with ESHA, who developed a fix. This was implemented in the S90 software release. The S90 release was scheduled on, to start on the 4th of March 2006 for completion by the 14th of April 2006. By the 22nd of March, uh, the S90 migration report showed the counter release was 99.9% .9 complete. Fujitsu monitored the issue 27th of March, an employee noted that the timeout locks had gone right down. So um, that's on the Fujitsu account of matters um, was a problem that was first noticed in September 2000 and a fix was applied in March and April 2006, so five and a half years later. Yes? Yes, that's what it is. Yes. Yeah. Now, in fact, this is an example where th this shouldn't be taken to be the last word on this. Mr. Justice Fraser found that the bug continued in operation uh, until 2010. But on um, the, the Fujitsu account, this was a bug that was um, operative for a, a close on a six year period. Is that right? That's what that says, yes. Yeah. Let's look at a, um, another example of a bug, please. Bug three, the suspense account bug. That's page 104 of your witness statement. So um, just page 104, please. Thank you. So um, bug error or defect number three, the suspense account bug, the usual opening paragraph. Uh, bullet point two, a change introduced into Horizon in July 2011 had the unintended consequence of leaving certain orphaned records from November or December uh, 2010 relating to a branch's suspense account in a table in the branch database rather than archiving them. The consequence was that once a year when an impacted branch produced the trading statement, if they had any amount in their suspense account, the suspense account records from 2010 were also pulled in so that the branch trading statement showed an erroneous amount in the suspense account. When the problem resurfaced a year later, a postmaster contacted Fujitsu and a peak was raised on the 25th of February 2013. Fujitsu di then diagnosed the issue and identified 14 branches as being affected. Fujitsu held a conference with the post office's problem manager. The orphan records were subsequently removed by the Fujitsu development team. An extra set of checks were introduced in October 2013. So if a a similar problem surfaced in the future, an error message would be displayed to the postmaster telling them to contact the Horizon uh, service desk. So here we can see we're dealing with Horizon Online, yes? yes? Yes. Rather than Legacy Horizon. And it's an issue that looks on the Fujitsu account to have lasted two years or so. Yes. Uh, can we turn, please, to the uh, a third bug, uh, page 118 of your witness statement, please? This is the reversals bug. Uh, we can skip the first bullet point, which exhibits um, four documents. Uh, second bullet point, a code fix distributed as part of the S30 release caused a problem under certain circumstances due to faulty logic. On occasion, when a postmaster attempted to reverse out a sum which had been remmed in, the balance showed double the, emission, the initial amount rather than um, zero. 
according to the April 2003 service review book, delivery of uh, S30 commenced in April 2003, and by the 2nd of May 2003, uh, 1, 000, sorry, 2,135 branches were live. The initial issue was reported by a postmaster on the 24th of April 2003, sent to Fujitsu um, uh, Third Line Support, the Service Support Centre, on the 28th of April 2003, who identified that an error had occurred. A known error log was raised, and the issue was also um, routed to Fujitsu's MSU team so they could liaise with the post office, who would then issue transaction corrections to rectify the accounts, following which the peak was to be routed back to Fujitsu so development could produce a code fix. So just stopping there, the bug was a, a doubling up problem, um, something that we've heard a lot about from some postmasters um, uh, themselves. But we know from other documents, I'm not asking you to comment on this, that the postmaster that raised the issue that's referred to in that third bullet point uh, had raised the issue uh, concerning uh, £13,910. He had rimmed in that sum as cash into his um, uh, Horizon terminal, but then, for a reason that's not clear, needed to reverse that particular transaction out. Might have got the wrong figure. The person at the till said, no, I don't want to, you to put in that £13,910 cash. Whatever it was, wanted to reverse the transaction. They did so, and instead of going back to zero, when they were remming out the transaction, the sum doubled to £27,830. And therefore, on the system, it showed that the sub-postmaster should be holding cash of £27,820 relating to that, tra that transaction, whereas they wanted to show that they were holding none. Understood? Yes. And we can see that um, from the next bullet point, on the 30th of April, the Fujitsu EPOS development team identified the coding error and that it had been released with S30. An emergency fix was created, went live on the 7th of May 2003. Instructions um, for testers detailed how the fix was to be tested and to make sure that both the new problem and the original problem, which S30 aimed to fix, had been fixed. So the, um, this tells us, I think this is right, isn't it, that the error was because of an attempted fix to another bug I think that is what it's saying, yes. So, um, and, and if we look into the detail of it, um, we've got the underlying documents. The Horizon Code, the problem was the, the person who'd written the Horizon Code had applied the incorrect mathematical symbol to reverse the reming in. So instead of applying the opposite mathematical symbol to what had been remmed in, it applied the same one as the operator had. So instead of applying a minus following a plus, it applied a second plus. Understand? I, I understand the math, so yeah. I, 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 I don't know whether it was, all of that was behind this. But. Well, the, if, we, if we were to delve into the underlying material, okay. that's exactly what that would show. Okay. So yeah. rather than, I put some money in plus, yeah. The reversal wants to um, reverse that. It should then apply a minus mm -hmm. to take it back to zero. Um, what it did was the mathematical symbol in the code was another plus sign, and so it doubled it. Understood, and I agree. Um, it was um, reported, according to that bullet point, in April, and fi uh, a fix to the problem caused by the earlier fix was applied in May 2003. Can we look at a fourth bug, please? Um, page 119. Um, this is the data tree um, build failure, and this is split into a number of sub-issues. This is issue one, which is the only one I'm going to um, address. Second bullet point, Fujitsu understands this issue was first reported to a branch on the 10th of November 1999, after a discrepancy in the counts, 
a number of pinnacles for similar incidents were raised between February and May 2000. A list of cross the main problems was presented in the monthly service review books to uh, be discussed in the service review forum with post office. The issue with the Dungannon branch was tracked in a number of these. Uh, to resolve the issue, uh, Fujitsu implemented two changes, specific diagnostics to log a failure to build the data tree and more error checking in the application code. These um, diagnostics were distributed to 99% of the estate by the 16th of May um, 2000. This would allow recurrences of the problem to be monitored. And then the last bullet point, error checking, was included in a later release. So um, the issue was first reported in um, the 10th of November, on the 10th of November 1999, according to uh, the second bullet point. Um, again, if we dug into the documents, we would see that um, concerned a £43,000 discrepancy. So uh, quite a sizable sum of money. And a fix was rolled out, um, we see from this last bullet point, uh, up until October 2000. Yes? Yes. And then lastly, by way of example, um, page 146 of your witness statement, please. Um, bug 18, and again, uh, like the last bug that we looked at, um, there are a number of issues which have been split out, so sub-issues. And this concerns the concurrent login bug and issue or, or sub-issue two of it. Uh, second bullet point, issue two concerns a receipts and payments mismatch that occurred due to a coding issue, which permitted a postmaster to transfer money from one counter to another while the first counter was being rolled over. The system should have prevented this. The incident was raised with Fujitsu on the 24th of July 2000. By the 28th, Fujitsu had established what had happened after discussing the circumstances with the postmaster and confirmed he shouldn't have been able effectively to log into two counters with the same user ID number. On the 1st of August 2000, a further incident was recorded as a, another instance of the same issue. Next bullet point, a number of detailed analyses were carried out with an interim diagnosis on the 4th of October, by the 22nd of November, Fujitsu determined that this was a transient bug caused by two modules in the application using different methods to communicate each other. An earlier release known as um, C145 should have already fixed the um, issue. So uh, bug um, identified in July with um, a decision that a uh, existing release by December 2000, uh, by uh, November 2000, should have fixed it. Okay, that can come down. Now, all of those 29 summaries are there for people to read. The core participants um, have uh, got them, have had them for um, many months now. Before you carry on, Mr. Beer, I just want to be clear about something. Um, in the previous examples you looked at with Mr. Beer and Mr. Patterson, you referenced um, documents which demonstrated that uh, the post office was made aware of each of those bugs more or less contemporaneously. All right, I'm not concerned about the detail of those documents. In that last one that we looked at, unless I missed it, you haven't referenced um, uh, a contemporaneous document or anything else to suggest that the post office was made aware of that bug. Uh, I, I just want to be clear about this. Um, is your evidence that each and every bug was notified to the post office contemporaneously or more or less contemporaneously? Or is it the case that there may have been some bugs which were not? My understanding. If I missed uh, the reference in 
B, D, A, D, and then please put me right, but, but I can't see it at the moment. And, and, and I can't see it there either, uh, Sir Wynne, so I think you are correct that the vast majority of bugs and errors and defects were shared. Um, whether bed, bed 18 in this example was, I would need to check. All right, um, thank you. Well, I, I wouldn't know off the top Mr. of my Beer, head. Yeah, as Mr. Beard has uh, noted, you, you will be returning, so there's no great urgency about it. But I wanted to raise it while it was fresh in my mind. Thank you. So you're, you're right to raise it. Generally, the summary um, where um, the post office has been notified or information shared uh, says so. So, um, looking at the 29 as a whole, um, w would you agree with um, the, the following uh, points? Uh, firstly, in each case, uh, Fujitsu agrees that the bug, error or defect existed. Yes. Um, secondly, on Fujitsu's own assessment, by looking at this um, appendix, uh, the bugs afflicted both Legacy Horizon and Horizon Online. Yes. No. Thirdly, uh, we can see by reference to this summary, and in particular if we read it alongside the Bugs, Errors and Defects report, which contains much more detail, we can see the date on which, according to Fujitsu at least, the bug, error, or defect was recorded or recognized by Fujitsu. Yes. Fourth, we can see the impact that Fujitsu assesses the bug to have had on the estate. Yes. Fifthly, we can see for most bugs, errors, and defects, uh, whether it was notified to the post office and if so, when Fujitsu say the bug was communicated to the post office? Yes. But sixthly, we can see that the earliest bug of the 29 errors, uh, bugs, errors and defects, was in November 1999. It was one of the examples I took you to. So that was in the course of the national rollout. Yes, agreed. And the latest, I'm not going to take it to you now, was May 2018. That was the Bureau Discrepancies bug, bug 14. Agreed. And so bugs, errors and defects afflicted the Horizon system on Fujitsu's own assessment for a period of nearly two decades. Y yes. And then lastly, uh, we can see Fujitsu's assessment of the length of time for which the bug was operative and sometimes that was a substantial period of time the first one i took you to calendar square for at least six years or ten years by reference to mr justice fraser's findings yes so i think it follows from this that it's plain that fujitsu staff knew about bugs errors and defects in horizon well before 2010 yes i agree uh, Fujitsu staff knew of them on Fujitsu's own account from at least November 1999. Agreed. And that this recognition by Fujitsu, reflected in your witness statement here, doesn't need any investigata investigatory work to be undertaken by the inquiry? No, it doesn't. It's, it's, in, the, it's in the notes. I agree. It doesn't... Um, need uh, any application of judgment by anyone because it's here in black and white in Fujitsu's own words, indeed in your own words. Agreed. When did Fujitsu um, realise that the bugs, errors and defects in its horizon system impacted on the evidence that was being relied on to investigate and prosecute sub-postmasters for criminal offences? Is that in my second statement? No. No. Um, this is going to the third statement, statement. essentially, so about I'd, litigation support. 
so, so I don't know the, the, the exact date of... Um, just repeat the question again, Mr. Yes. Mr. When me. did Fujitsu realise that the bugs, errors and defects in its horizon system impacted on the evidence that was being relied on to investigate and prosecute sub-postmasters for criminal offences? So I think in, my, in, in the company's second statement we draw attention to, we, we knew, the company knew several times that that evidence that had been presented needed to be corrected given some bugs and errors or the data needed to be rerun. So I think there'd be several examples in the second, uh, second statement which answers your question. I, I can't give you the exact date on each and every one of them. I think in each particular um, uh, uh, ARQ request, it would be applied differently. In other words, I'm asking, when did Fujitsu put two and two together and realise they added up to four? Mm -hmm. Four being, we need to tell the post office about these bugs, errors and defects, not because there's a problem with the system that we're selling to them, but because they're prosecuting sub-postmasters on the basis of the evidence that we're providing to them. So I think there's, there's, there's lots of evidence um, of us informing the post office of that data that we've just discussed, uh, bugs and errors, and how those bugs and errors did or did not uh, impact the, um, the, the financial position uh, as reported. W what the post office did with that particular piece of data, Mr. Beer, I, I do not believe Fujitsu knew at the time, but certainly latterly, of course, the company became more aware that it was being used nearly solely for, prosec for uh, prosecutions. Would you agree that the 29 summaries that we've just uh, looked at some examples of revealing bugs, errors and defects in the Horizon system um, ought to have been uh, revealed to the post office for the purposes of its investigatory and prosecutorial functions? So I don't know if, if they were not. Yeah, that's a different question. I'm asking, would you agree uh, that they ought to have been? Oh, uh, yes, I do. You know, I think, that um, Fujitsu employees provided um, witness statements to uh, the post office uh, for the purposes of um, the prosecution of sub-postmasters. And um, speaking in general terms, these bugs, errors and defects did not find their way into those witness statements. Do you know why? I do not know why. I have seen um, examples of the witness statements. Um, on a personal level, I am surprised that that detail was not included in the witness statements given by Fujitsu staff to the post office. Um, and I have seen some evidence of, of um, editing of witness statements uh, by, by others where there was a proposal, I think you're referring to, to include at least uh, a reference to some of the bugs or some data integrity problems, and they were edited out. Correct, Mr. Beer. And I uh, no doubt you would regard that as shameful. I would, yes, that would be one word I would use. What's the other one? Um, Shameful, appalling. Um, my understanding of how our laws work in this country, um, that all of the evidence should have been put in front of the sub-postmaster that the post office was relying on to prosecute them. Can we turn, please, to your third witness statement, then, please? And now, the matters about which you speak in your third witness statement, and uh, we're about to address through my questions to you, uh, again, are generally the product of you having been provided with documents by your team or briefed by your team in the same way as uh, your second witness statement was created. Is that right? Correct. I'm going to ask you questions about the provision of litigation support by Fujitsu to the post office in connection with the Horizon system, and in particular, the use, the non-use, and the reliability of ARQ data audit, record, query, or ARC data. 
Now, you start your third witness statement, perhaps naturally, with the contractual and other forms of formal documents that regulated or ought to have regulated the litigation support to be provided by Fujitsu to the post office. That's where I'm going to start. So starting with the contract, uh, are you aware that Fujitsu was um, contractually bound to provide evidence in support of post office prosecutions and civil proceedings? Yes. And are you aware that Fujitsu operated a fraud and litigation support office? Yes, I am aware. Which um, still exists, I think. Uh, I don't know if it does still exist, Mr. Beer. I would need to check that. This um, office, the Fraud and Litigation Support Office, was to provide horizon evidence to support prosecutions and civil actions, correct? Yes, correct. Would you accept that, um, as Fujitsu was um, an integral part of the system supporting legal proceedings, against sub-postmasters and knew that it was, it had a duty to ensure that the, da the data that it supplied was accurate and complete? Yes. Uh, has uh, what you um, discovered led you to the conclusion that the data supplied was not accurate and complete? It yes, it has. And we made, the company made that in this statement, actually this um, number three. Can we look at just what the contract said? So this is your um, third witness statement, WITN 0665-0300, at page three. And again, in general terms, I'm going to restrict my questions to what you've included in your witness statement, rather than looking at underlying materials partly because of the limitations of your evidence, given your um, position, um, partly because I suspect it will turn into an exercise of you saying um, you weren't in the relevant post at the time and you didn't see this document or that document at the relevant time, uh, but you can read the document like the rest of us. And I, I don't want you just interpreting documents. Uh, can we look at um, paragraphs um, six and seven then, please? You say, from the outset um, of Horizon, Fujitsu has been required by contract to maintain an audit trail of, quote, all transactions and events. See, uh, for example, para 3.1 of Schedule A03 to the codified agreement of the 28th of July 1999, and para 3.1 of Schedule D5 to V13 of the codified agreement of 23rd of November 2020. I'm not going to ask you any questions about the agreement of um, 2020 because prosecutions had uh, stopped by them. Um, this contractual obligation flowed from requirement 699 contained in paragraph 1.102 of Schedule A15 to the 1999 codified um, agreement. Uh, in particular, uh, R699, requirement 699 notes at 1.102.6, the content of the audit trail should be agreed with Post Office Counters Limited by a date consistent with the project plan, and 1.102.9, the audit trail shall have a level of security such that it cannot be altered or um, deleted. Um, no need to read um, 102.11. And so you focused um, in these two paragraphs um, on the obligations of Fujitsu arising from requirement 699 of the codified agreement. Correct. And they are all about the duty to maintain and provide what's called an audit trail. Correct. Uh, were you told about and did you take into account in what you said in this witness statement a separate requirement in the codified agreement concerning what was described as prosecution support. That's requirement 829. Do I refer? I, no. I don't. Um, 
I think we would have done in, in our response to, to in, in our evidence here in number, in number three. Yes, I would have, we would have done. You see, the, the, these paragraphs, there's a series of requirements in the contract. Yes. Um, and you're focusing all on all about 699, which is about audit, either operational audit or commercial audit mm -hmm. by auditors. There's a separate series of requirements concerning the provision of evidence for the purposes of prosecution, mm -hmm. which spring up from um, requirement 829, which you, you don't analyse here at all. D did you know about that separate requirement, the 829 requirement? So I am aware um, of the... Eight, I didn't know the number, but I, I was aware, um, and the company was aware, that there was a prosecutory support uh, obligation in the contract. OK. In any event, let's look at what you do talk about concerning the audit requirement, which, which may be a very different thing to prosecution support. Uh, in that paragraph at the bottom of the page we've got there, you remind us that the codified agreement said the audit trail shall have a level of security uh, such that it cannot be um, altered or um, deleted. Is it now recognised and accepted by Fujitsu that Fujitsu could and did make insertions and amendments uh, into data which had an impact on branch accounts? The, the way I believe the, the system worked for discovering uh, for the audit trail was to take the raw data um, and take a, a copy of that f to then provide the ARQs. Um, so I think in the ARQ data, um, you, you could filter out or add data to that. So yes. Do you accept this meant that um, Fujitsu could and did alter the audit trail data? So I think it does say, mean that, yes. I.e. do the opposite to what the requirement in 102.9 says? I think the changes um, or any adjustments were agreed with um, the post office before any action would or would not be, hence the bugs and errors and defects. So I, I don't think it was a, um, a, a, a secret intervention. I think it was discussing you know, this bug, this error causes this, make change. But I think you would accept that audit data should have been an exact reflection of the transactions taking place at the branch, no more and no less. I, I do agree with that. And I think the underlying data in the message uh, store was exactly that. That wasn't what was given in the audit data? No. Can we turn to page eight, please? where you set out for us a flowchart um, at, at the top of the page, thank you, taken from a prosecution support process document of the 29th of February 2005, so a Fujitsu policy document. And I just want to um, look at the policy document. This is one of the rare occasions when I'm going to delve into the underlying material that's an annex to your witness statement. It's just so we can under stand some foundational terms, get those locked down for our later discussion. Uh, the underlying document from which this uh, diagram is taken is FUJ 0015-2209. This is... Um, one of the exhibits to your witness statement, the 11th exhibit to your uh, witness statement. And we can see the date of it, as I've just said, in the top right there, 29th of February 2005. We can see that it's version 2 from the top. And if we just go over the page, please. We can see from that uh, table at the top there I think the fourth entry on that table, that version one of this document was dated 
the 26th of November 2002? Yes. But let's work from this version, the one that was operative from the 29th of February 2005. And I'm afraid we're going to have to go through a bit of it just to understand some uh, terminology um, and the process that was intended to start with. Um, can we start, please, with um, page 8? Uh, scope of document, if we can just uh, look at the top half of the page. Uh, this document sets out the procedures to be adopted by a post office accounts prosecution support service for managing and dealing with audit um, record queries for investigation and support purposes, including the undertaking of audit record queries, presentation of transaction records extracted by audit record queries, analysis of appropriate records and logs, preparation of witness statements or facts in relation to audit record queries, attendance at court by relevant employees to give evidence in respect of witness statements, and undertaking of additional litigation and prosecution support activities as may be requested on a case-by-case -case basis on the instruction of um, legal counsel. I'm going to skip the next paragraph. And then on to ARQs in support of potential prosecution will be obtained solely from the Horizon System Audit Archive stroke server. The method by which the integrity of this data is protected is described in the audit trail functional specification. Evidence in support of data integrity will be sourced from the audit archive stroke server and post office account business logs. All access to audit data is restricted to named individuals via dedicated workstations located in a secure environment. This is consistent with the security controls employed for the existing service. Supporting evidence is sourced um, from relevant business records and logs. Uh, two types of requests, audit record query only, involving the extraction of audit archive of records for an outlet, ARQ plus witness statement, involves extraction of the audit archive of records uh, plus the provision of a particular uh, witness statement. Yes? Yes. And then um, if we go over to page uh, nine, please. There's something about the history in the penultimate paragraph on this page, the provision of prosecution support, specifically the provision of witness statements of fact was not formalized and was provided on a without prejudice subject to contract basis pending the receipt of a change request. Prosecution support for the existing system is now provided as part of the prosecution support system. This document outlines the operational approach to this service. So that's a reflection, is it, that before um, uh, this document uh, there wasn't a formalized statement or policy on the provision of prosecution support. That is my understanding. And then if we can go forwards, please, to um, page 10. Uh, if we read paragraph 3.2 at the bottom. Uh, there is a provision here about the limits or the limitations on ARQs the number of ARQs requested by post office in connection with investigation or prosecution shall be the first uh, to be met per year of 720 or 15,000 query days on a rolling basis with no more than the first to be met in any calendar month of 60 queries or 1,250 query days. Any um, ARQs over and above the 720 maximum will be rolled over to the next 12-month period and count towards the total for the next year. Uh, post office may vary the aggregate limits of ARQs um, between the limits set out above um, and um, following um, substitutes for those limits. And there are some different figures um, uh, required provided for. 
And then if we go to the foot of um, this page, thank you, each um, audit record query shall relate only to an individual outlet. ARQs are limited to specific types of information, data fields, these are, and then they're listed. And then page 14, please. For 14, please. Uh, under the heading prosecution support, in addition to the details at uh, 3, 4 above, which we've just looked at, post office shall, wherever possible, advise on the relevant section of the ARQ form whether an associated witness statement is required. See Appendix 1, which we'll look at in a moment. And then scope, a post office account, that means Fujitsu, shall, in relation to an ARQ, at the request of the post office, one, analyze appropriate Horizon help desk and non-polling reports for the specific search criteria in order to check the integrity of transactions extracted. Two, analyze fault logs for the devices from which the record of transactions were obtained to check the integrity of transactions. Three, provide witness statements of fact in relation to that ARQ. Um, the above anal analyses and witness statements will be undertaken in respect of a maximum of 250 ARQs per year. And fifth, uh, Fujitsu will provide for the attendance at court by the person who has provided a witness statement as identified above to give evidence in support of that witness statement, a maximum of 100 days a year. And then at page 19, please. We see at uh, the top of the page there under uh, paragraph 7.0, the diagram which you have cut into your uh, witness statement. Yes. Which we'll come back to in a moment. And then at the foot of the page, 7.1 and 7.1.1, there's a list of the nine steps um, to be taken when an ARQ is, uh, request is received. So 7.1.1 team member shall identify the search criteria. And then if we just go over the page, two, uh, create, they shall create an audit trail of the request. And then three, search the files required to complete the report. Four, select and retrieve the files. Five, generate the message store. Um, uh, six, use a tool called our query to select the files per the search criteria. Over the page, please. Seven, um, uh, burn the data onto a closed CD along with a Word document with an explanation. Eight, carry out a virus check. Nine, uh, dispatch it. So the nine steps in the process are described. And then pa page 21, please. You'll remember that um, there were four other things under prosecution support that Fujitsu could do, and this lists them out. If we look at 7.2.1, so the first of them, 2.1, is uh, check Horizon system help desk logs. Uh, problems or faults at the post office um, outlet logged with the HSH will be examined using the search cr criteria. So this is if the sub-postmaster has um, called an issue in. It um, ought to be discovered by searching the help desk logs. Yep. And then uh, secondly, over the page, the, the second thing as well as the production of ARQ data uh, that was to be done was an analysis of non-polling reports. Non-polling reports shall be reviewed for the outlet in question. Uh, can you, uh, do you know what non-polling is? 
I'm assuming it's about the network and connecting to the main database and check. Broadly, yes. yes. So conduct um, an analysis of um, non-polling reports. Mm -hmm. The third thing is um, analyze the fault logs. So any relevant pinnacles in power help logs will be reviewed through the peak system to identify any recorded faults that might affect the integrity or admissibility of the audit archive from which the ARQ queries are extracted. Peak log will detail the error relating to the site equipment and service in question. And then the fourth um, add-on, uh, complete a witness statement of fact. Prosecution support will provide a witness statement of fact as far as possible to be undertaken by the person responsible for the actioning of the work so as to retain continuity of evidence. And then 7.4.1 about witness statements of fact. Uh, any material or otherwise pertinent information shall be recorded and included in the relevant witness statement of fact. Uh, requirements for witness statements shall be completed by the individual from prosecution support who completed the request. The statement shall follow the standard format and layout for witness statements of facts provided in evidence. Contents of witness statements of fact are flexible depending on specific requirements and the knowledge of the witness giving the statement. An example of a witness statement of fact is provided in Appendix 2. Let's just go and look at that, please. That's um, page 29, I think, this document. So there's a template or boilerplate um, witness statement. If we just um, look at paragraphs one and two. You can just read those to yourself. Yes. And then over the page. So an explanation in C of the system and in D and in E. And then if we go forward to page 32, please. Foot of the page of 32. Uh, during audit extractions, the following controls apply. And then they're listed out between 1 and 10. You just scroll. Keep scrolling, thank you. Then there's some deletions. And then this ARQ, whatever the number was, was received on whatever the date was and asked for informa information in connection with the post office at whatever the FAD code of the post office was. I produce a copy of ARQ as an exhibit number on various dates and at various times between two dates. I, un I undertook extractions of data held on the Horizon system in accordance with the requirements of something and followed the procedure outlined above. I produced the resultant CD as um, X as an exhibit number. That's all we need to um, look at there. And if we go back then, please, um, to uh, page 22 of the, uh, of the prosecution support document. We were looking at witness statements of facts in 7.2.4.1 at the foot. We'd reached um, halfway through paragraph three. For each request, Post Office Limited and Prosecution Support will agree relevant matters, such as those listed below, which should be covered in the witness statement of fact, based on the knowledge of the witness. One, identification uh, information about the author, summary of the previous manual system used by the Post Office before Horizon, summary of Horizon and what information is recorded, how consistent time is recorded within Horizon, 
the types of report that can be generated on a counter by a clerk over the page, transfer of accounts from post office main accounts department, brief overview of applications, how data is passed from the counter to the archive, process for extracting information for ARQs and the controls in place to protect and ensure the integrity of that data, analysis of the ARQ when the ARQ form was received and the date when the audit data extraction took place, a summary of the evidence provided for the um, request. And then 7.2.4.2, court attendance in support of a witness statement of a fact. The author of a witness statement of fact may be required to attend court in order to bear testimony to the facts. 2.5, provision of exhibits. This will generally comprise one of the following four. CDs, which we've seen, HSH logs, which we've seen reference to, non-polling reports, which we've seen uh, reference to, and fault logs. Their back reference is essentially to paragraphs 7.2.1, 3, uh, 2 and 3 of the document. Then over the page, please. Sorry, to page 25. Um, under the heading additional prosecution support, there may be occasions when information is requested which exceeds that provided for. And under 8.2, expert witness evidence. To offer all the available evidence without it being requested will only serve to flood the courtroom with documentation. For this reason, expert in-depth analysis and detailed expert witness statements are rarely required, as opposed to witness statements of fact. It's conceivable that given the size and complexity of Horizon, the integrity of the witness statement of fact may be challenged by defence counsel in order to discredit a prosecution. In these addi cases, additional granular detail about the, working technical, uh, the technical working and integrity of various systems may be required, if only for unused material. And then there's a list of the um, uh, types of um, uh, expert evidence that could be called upon to be provided. Above that, expert witnesses could comprise anyone within the post office account or its approved contractors who would be called upon to provide and testify to this additional um, evidence. Right, we can stop there uh, looking at that um, policy document. W would you agree that this is, um, provides quite comprehensive uh, guidance on the provision of prosecution support by the uh, uh, Fujitsu Prosecution Support Service to the Post Office? Yes, it does. Um, would you agree that it um, uh, recognises on its face a difference between evidence of fact and expert evidence? Yes. And that it treats them differently? Yes. Uh, would you agree it sets out the steps to be taken in each case to obtain and then to disclose ARQ data? Yes. And it reflects those steps or requires those steps to be reflected and spoken to in a witness statement? And more. So I think the ARQ data alone is not enough. And in our, in our corporate statement, um, we say that also. Yes. We're going to come to that probably after the break, the okay. important point you make in paragraph 19 of yes. your statement, yeah. that um, ARQ was never enough. Yes. And, and I think that document shows that there is a range of information that a sub-postmaster should have been presented with. Uh, if we go back to the diagram on page 8 of your um, third witness statement, please. WITN 06500300. Page 8, please. If we look at the diagram at the top, you'll see that um, it splits immediately. If that just can be blown up, the diagram, please. Thank you. 
between, um, on the right-hand side, an ARQ form, which is um, for prosecution support, and on the left-hand side, um, seemingly one which is not. Yes? Mm, yes. And it, it, it treats them um, differently. And you'll see that on the right-hand side, as we've just seen in the policy document, that um, step one <coughs> includes um, checking help desk logs. We've seen that. Uh, the second step is to analyze non-polling reports. And the third step is analyze the peaks. And as we've seen in the policy document, that's all about integrity of data. Yes. It, it doesn't include um, checking the known error log. That's neither in the diagram nor in the policy, does it? No, it doesn't. And so it's not in the diagram, it's not in the policy, and if we looked, it's not in the witness statement either, the, the boilerplate witness statement. Do you know why that is? That if you're wanting to look at the integrity of Horizon data, one wouldn't look at the known error log. I, I don't know why they wouldn't have done, and, and I would have expected a more holistic assessment of the entire environment um, that a sub-postmaster was using. Um, so I would have expected um, error logs and other matters to be presented and considered. In your... Um reading of the materials in your um, investigation of the issues and in the briefings you have received, uh, did you note any reluctance on the part of Fujitsu in the past to reveal the existence of a thing called the known error log? There is, in, in the um, submission to the inquiry today for number three, there is evidence of that where don't don't share with the post office yet. I don't. I don't know the, the individual situation where it was subsequently shared with uh, with the post office. But there was certainly those reluctance. Whether that was just for completeness, completeness to make sure that what was shared with the post office was complete versus, I think, um, it may well be. But there's definitely evidence in in submissions from from in this. Uh, um, submission around exactly what you just described. Do you know why Fujitsu might be reluctant to reveal even the existence of something called the known error log? No, no I, it, it, the title is known error log. It's, it's not unusual in a large system of certainly of this size that there will be errors and known errors and certainly from the very outset um, there were lists of them and communication between all parties. Um, how that was communicated to sub-postmasters, I think, is slightly different, but known errors were known, and lots of people knew them. Whether there were a particular one, Mr Beer, to your question earlier, that might be a timing thing versus not trying to share it. I'm, I'm not, at the moment, delving into any individual cases as to why the known error log uh, was not revealed to a sub-postmaster in a prosecution. I'm asking why it's missing from the process. Yeah, I have no idea why it's not. So that would be an appropriate moment um, if it's convenient to you to take the morning break until a quarter to 12. That's fine by me. So we'll um, reconvene at quarter to 12. Thank you very much, sir.
um, to diagrammatic form the process, the main parts of the process that we saw in the 2005 process document. I think you'll agree that um, it, uh, either the process uh, or the diagram, does not include as part of the process checking um, event logs. Mm. Yes. Uh, including the NT event log. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. And I think elsewhere in your statement, I'm not going to take you to them, I think paragraph 89 and uh, uh, 100 in your witness statement, you uh, speak to the fact that some errors um, which were not otherwise picked up were recorded in such error logs. Yes. You tell us in your statement that um, checking event logs was only considered as part of the process of um, the routine process to be undertaken after the locking problems were discovered in 2008. Uh, do you know why checking event logs was only considered as part of the routine process after 2008? No, I do not, Mr Beer. When you describe that for us in your witness statement, you say that you understood, or you under, it is understood to have become part of the process in 2008. Um, do you, uh, how do you know that it was, um, or it is understood to have become part of the process after 2008? Only from the information that we've gathered from conversations and, and, and documentation from investigations around the process. Um, and that, that is what I think I've reflected in the, uh, in the submission. The process that we see in the diagram and in the policy um, did not include checking the message store for any uh, notes, for example, left by SSC staff, uh, correct? Correct. Uh, uh, and therefore, if SSC staff uh, left messages when they had inserted data into branch accounts, we've heard about this from um, Anne Chambers, uh, that would not be revealed by the process undertaken? No, it wouldn't be. Do you know why that check was not built into the process, checking the message store for notes left by SSC staff? No, I do not. That might um, uh, record or reflect the fact that they had inserted data into branch accounts? So I, I do not, Mr. Peter. Why? As a result of those um, things that were not um, done, checking the known error logs, um, not looking at event logs, including the NT event log, not checking the message store for notes left by SSE staff, SSC staff, means that in the data, uh, data gathering process, when the post office made a request for ARQ data, Fujitsu did not provide everything that was required to reveal whether Horizon was working properly at a particular branch at a particular time. Do you agree? I think the, the document requesting the ARQ, I think you said, we, we, we saw earlier about witness statement or no witness statement, that document laid out the criteria for the search. Yes. Um, it did not include those, those points that those we've just three agreed. Things. Yeah, those three things that we've just agreed on, so, and, and I don't know why. Uh, would you agree that the failure to include whether as part of the process or a witness statement that reflected the steps that were taken as part of that process mean that Fujitsu did not provide everything that was required to reveal whether Horizon was working at a particular branch at a particular time properly? Yes, I think the witness statement and other evidence should have been far more comprehensive uh, before it was placed in front of a sub-postmaster, yes. Not just a witness statement, the the steps that were taken. Oh, no, indeed. Yes, yes. Because the witness yes. statement should only be a reflection of what has been done. Agreed, agreed. Additionally, we've heard evidence, uh, heard evidence this week, in fact, that members of third line support, the SSC, undertook a process of filtering ARQ data before it was provided to the post office. 
and that filtering of data meant that some relevant data may not have been provided to the post office. That part of the process, the SSE getting involved and filtering data out, is not described in either the policy, uh, the diagram, mm. or the witness statement, is it? No, it's not. So it's not in the process map we see here. No, it's, it's not. It's not in the broader policy, or indeed in any other document, that describes the full process. And it's not in the boilerplate witness statement. No, it is not. Indeed, uh, would you agree the witness statement, the boilerplate witness statement, gives the impression that all of the raw data that has been obtained within the relevant date ranges has been extracted and provided to the post office? Yes, it does. Whereas, in fact, there's a step in the process that's not been revealed to the sub-postmaster or to the court. Agreed. And so if the evidence that we've heard from Fujitsu witnesses this week is correct, then a witness statement that followed the template and didn't mention the filtering out exercise would mean that the witness statement was false and misleading by omission, wouldn't it? I think the witness statement generally needed to be more comprehensive and it did it absolutely miss those points you've just alluded to and it would be misleading. Because it gives the impression of extraction essentially onto a CD. Very simply, yes it does. Can we um, please turn to the utility of the ARQ data and um, look at what, what might be one of the most significant paragraphs in your witness statement, which is paragraph 19. This is on page 11. You say, um, the inquiry has asked Fujitsu to confirm whether in its view, the ARQ data provided to the post office over time was sufficient to enable a postmaster to understand whether Horizon was operating correctly at their branch. And indeed, that is the question that we ask you to address. Uh, in the light of one, the evidence heard by the inquiry from postmasters during the human impact hearings, two, the evidence set out in the Fujitsu witness statements, and three, the matter set out in this corporate statement in relation to the ARQ spreadsheet. Fujitsu cannot confirm that ARQ data on its own was sufficient to enable a postmaster to understand whether Horizon was operating correctly at the relevant branch in the time period covered by the ARQ data requested by the post office. Correct. So you're saying uh, by reference to three data sources there, or three bits of information or evidence, uh, that the conclusion in the last three lines, Fujitsu can't confirm that ARQ data was sufficient on its own, was, op uh, 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 was sufficient to enable a postmaster to understand whether Horizon was operating at their branch correctly. Agreed. That, that's, um, would you agree, a rather startling omission? Yes, I would agree, and it's, but, it's, but importantly, it's the truth. On its own, the ARQ data could not give a sub-postmaster all the data that they would need to determine whether everything in that environment was working correctly. Apart from the event logs that I've described that weren't um, accessed, the KELs that I've um, described, the notes left in the message store that were not accessed. Has Fujitsu identified anything else that was needed to understand from a postmaster and a court's perspective whether Horizon was operating correctly at their branch? In, in our submission, in the company's submission here, we haven't identified um, 
any other material or any other systems that needed to be interrogated. Um, in, in my um, uh, reading of our documentation and given, given what I know, I think there are other areas that may well be in terms of the other systems inside the, um, the Credence system and the pulse apps is how these things all feed into each other should also have been, uh, should also have been checked. In the, um, that can come down, thank you. In the um, group litigation uh, proceedings in the High Court, in the Horizon Issues trial, the post office's um, expert, um, Dr. Warden, um, explained audit data as being uh, central to the operation of the whole system. And he said it's a central principle of Horizon that the core audit database acts as a gold, uh, sorry, a secure gold standard for branches. A central principle of Horizon that the core audit database acts as a secure gold standard for branch accounts. And indeed, the trial judge, Mr. Justice Fraser, uh, based in part um, a number of his findings on this evidence and what he was told about the centrality and completeness of ARQ data. I think you'll know that from reading the judgment. Yes. And the issue that confronted the judge was why was ARQ data not sought in a number of the cases and the consequences for the uh, reliability of uh, action taken against the sub-postmaster because ARQ data was not sought. In the light of what you've said, I think you would agree that the provision of uh, the ARQ data in the form that it was provided and the extent that it was provided was not really a, the gold standard at all. No, it wasn't. More a bronze standard or a copper standard? Uh, I, I wouldn't use th that characterization at all. I've seen... Um, Pewter? Well, I have seen one of the um, uh, examples, I think, in Mr. Castleton's case and looking at that spreadsheet. And it's, uh, I think, for me, it's impossible to determine from that. And that's certainly not a gold standard or any standard. It's a, it's a very simple Excel file which tells you not very much. Do you know why um, Fujitsu allowed that mischaracterization of the position to stand in the course of the group litigation? No, I do not. And whether or not it was um, the gold standard uh, as it was presented in the group litigation, in fact, you, I think, agree that ARQ data was only a start? I completely agree. And at the very least, ARQ data ought to have been provided in uh, any case of the investigation or prosecution of a sub-postmaster for a criminal offence. Yes. But looking at the three reasons that you gave for um, ARQ data uh, not being sufficient to enable a sub-postmaster to understand whether Horizon was operating correctly at the relevant time. Uh, the first reason was um, evidence heard by the inquiry from sub-postmasters during the human impact hearings. What was it about that evidence that leads you to the conclusion that you've reached? Listening to, or reading in my case actually, the, um, the, the submissions, the notion that all of those sub-postmasters um, had somehow all uh, independently experienced the same thing and were all not unaware uh, and couldn't control it or didn't know what was going on is clearly not true. There were problems and the sub-postmasters were flagging those problems and it is very clear from all of the evidence from sub-postmasters that on its own it could not be relied upon. 
the ARQ data, uh, the ARQ data that is. So it's listening to the evidence of sub postmasters or reading the evidence of sub postmasters. So in my how is that translated into the ARQ data was not enough conclusion? So in the um, research and, and the work that the team have done in looking at all the evidence or all the um, commentary from the sub postmasters to have that volume of commentary around the data, the, uh, the appearance of it, how it was presented, how it was, you, there is clearly a problem in that process and that is why we've concluded it was not on its own sufficient enough for the sub postmasters to uh, conclude. Thank you. The second reason you give for reaching the conclusion you do is the evidence set out in the Fujitsu witness statements. And the Fujitsu witness statements are the witness statements that were filed at the same time, or roughly the same time, as your corporate statement. Yes. Uh, they included, um, uh, for example, um, that of John Simpkins and Gerald Barnes, from whom we've heard this week. John Simpkins told the inquiry in his witness statement and in his evidence in relation to Legacy Horizon that the message store provided a much more comprehensive account of the data held in the audit archive than did at the ARQ data that was provided. Presumably, it's that kind of evidence that you're referring to here as meaning that ARQ data was uh, not good enough. Yeah, yes, all three of the um, witness statements... And is that because in this example, the information held on the message store would have been of use to sub postmasters who sought to challenge alleged shortfalls? Yes, and I, th and, and I believe in reading the witness statements from um, other Fujitsu colleagues, it was very clear the message store was a far richer source of that information. The third thing you mentioned as leading to the conclusion that Fujitsu has reached is uh, the matters set out in this corporate witness statement. Yes? Yes. Is that essentially the six subtopics that you go on to address in your witness statement from paragraph uh, 26 onwards? Yeah, it's the, um, it, it talks about the table. Yep. Yeah, so if yep. we look at the table yes. at the foot of page 14. Yes. If that can come up on the screen, please. Third corporate witness statement, page 14. It's essentially those six things which are, um, can I call them problems with ARQ data? Yes. That's led you to the paragraph 19 conclusion too? Yes. So let's just see the context of this. If we go back a page to page 13... Foot of the page, paragraph 26. Inquiry has asked whether Fujitsu is aware of any cases where an ARQ log produced for the purposes of court proceedings against sub postmasters, uh, at one, may not have accurately matched the original log files, or two, was or may be unreliable. To get, uh, together, you call them ARQ reliability. And you say, you tell us in paragraph 27. In the course of Fujitsu's investigations to date, a number of incidents that may have impacted on either the underlying audit trail from which ARQ data is extracted or the ARQ extracts themselves have been identified. Your investigations have included both document searches and discussions with employees. They're described in more detail below, given the extensive period covered by the requests and the limitations of relying on interpreting records of technical matters without the benefit of guidance or explanation from relevant employees with contemporaneous knowledge. Fujitsu cannot be sure that these incidents uh, contained in the witness statement are exclusive. And if more are discovered, you'll tell us. Yeah, correct. So just looking at sort of the hierarchy of problems that we're dealing with, one is that in the prosecution of sub-postmasters, in many occasions, no ARQ data was asked for or provided. Yes. Top tier problem. 
uh, second problem, in the cases where ARQ data was provided, it wasn't sufficient in itself. See paragraph 19 of your witness statement. Yes. And suffered from the defects that your employees have described. Yes. Third tier problem, in any event, there were incidents across time that affected the very reliability of the ARQ data itself. Yes. Can we look then at that third tier problem, reliability of ARQ um, data? So bearing in mind the health warning you give us here that um, this shouldn't be taken to be um, exhaustive or complete. But what you are telling us is, is this right, that the six incidents or the six issues that you set out in the table do cast doubt on the reliability and completeness of ARQ data? Yes. Can we look, please, at um, paragraph um, 28 and 29 on page 15? You say, I understand that Fujitsu has identified approximately 2,400 ARQ requests dating from November 2002 onwards. For reasons highlighted above, it's not been possible to conduct a forensic investigation into the ARQ reliability of the audit data supplied to the post office in respect of ARQ requests. Is that essentially because the raw data is not available? In, in some cases, yes. I think before 2007, we don't have the, the raw data. Uh, the following summaries of incidents which Fujitsu has identified as having a potential impact on the issue of ARQ reliability have been prepared from documents produced to the inquiry. They're not within your personal knowledge. So just translating the effect of those two paragraphs, uh, 28 and 29, uh, it's right that the six issues that we're going to speak about in a moment refer to in the remainder of your witness statement haven't been run against the 2,400 ARQ requests that the post office made. Correct. To see whether they, in fact, afflicted um, that data. And so secondly, is this right, the actual impact of the six incidents or issues on the 2,400 ARQ requests is not known? In, in some instances, they are very time-bound, some of these six topics. Yes. So they wouldn't have applied to a previous version of Horizon. So there will be definitely not all of them would be have to be applied to all 2,400 because of time. Yes. Um, other than that, you, I would agree with your characterization. Uh, but looking at it the other way around, would you agree that these six um, incidents or issues are not assessed to have had no material impact on the reliability or integrity or completeness of ARQ data, otherwise you wouldn't be telling us about Yes, agreed, agreed. Yeah. yes. Instead, they have at least a potential impact on the reliability of some of the ARQ data. Yes. I think it follows from that, is this right, that you accept that the post office ought to have been told about these six incidents or issues? I guess they should have been, and I believe they were. In relation to all six? And we might go through through all of them now. As I said, I think earlier, there was certainly a delay in some correspondence we've seen in evidence between when an ins when a problem which could affect was communicated. But I, I am unaware, Mr. Beer, whether any of these were held back entirely. Okay. Well, we'll look at that as we go through um, um, e each of them. Okay. And just to be clear, so everyone can work out where we are, this is a completely separate issue from the 29 bugs, errors and defects. That's um, errors and defects with um, the operation of the Horizon system. This we're dealing with six um, incidents or issues, problems, concerns, uh, with the uh, production of uh, ARQ data. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> But just going back to my question, I think it follows that you accept that the post office should have been told about the six incidents. Yes. And that's because that would enable the post office to um, either decide whether reliance could be placed on the ARQ data that it was being given or not. And if it decided that reliance could be placed on the ARQ data, 
then it would need to tell the defendant and the court about the issue or issues that it had been told about by Fujitsu. Agreed. So it can give proper disclosure of the um, uh, flaw in the data which might cast doubt on its reliability. Uh, agreed. That's why they needed to be told. I think it's clear from um, the evidence you're going to tell us about a number of the um, six issues that the incidents were indeed known about by the post office and discussions took place um, at a senior level between the post office and <coughs> Fujitsu, including uh, the consequences of the error and whether compensation needed to be paid by Fujitsu to the post office. Is that right? Compensation from Fujitsu? I, I didn't quite catch the last part. The yes. Part, when we look at one of the incidents, we'll see that um, there was a threat of litigation from the post office to Fujitsu. On the bro was that the broken audit trail? Um, yes, it was. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. No, I understand. So I agree with you, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Bill, on that one. Yeah. So some of them escalated up to a senior level. Yeah, yes, I, yes, I, I follow you now. Yep. Are you aware of um, any instances where there was a known or suspected um, issue with the ARQ data and that ARQ data was nonetheless relied on by the post office in a uh, civil or criminal proceeding brought against a postmaster? Have you got an example? Or? I'm asking you whether as part of the process that you've gone through that you have, uh, and your company has discovered, uh, never mind the 2,400 requests that were uh, put into us by the post office, let's look at the ones that actually resulted mm -hmm. um, in criminal proceedings and a conviction. Mm -hmm. Can we see whether any of these six um, bugs, I'm going to call them, yeah. uh, Afflicted the reliability of that data. It, so, 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 my, so my evidence says yes, it could have done. Yes, it could have done. Can we look then at the six um, incidents? And the first of them comes on page fifteen of your witness statement. I'm going to deal with these at um, relative speed because. Um, the detail is set out in your yeah. witness statement um, in, in detail and is backed up by over 300 exhibits. Uh, firstly, the broken audit trail. This is problem number one, I'm going to call it. And we can see what the issue is uh, on page 15 at paragraph 30. Um, in or around May 2001, it was identified that there was a data loss in the audit trail for a six-day period in August 2000. So I think that tells us that nine months after the data loss occurred, it was recognised. Yes? yes. At this time, audit data was gathered by an audit server and written to a tape for long-term storage to be retrieved when needed two data centres at Bootle and Wigan, which contained the main horizon servers. And then you go on to describe um, in more detail how the data loss occurred. And then if we look at the second point, which is notification to the post office, that's page 33, sorry, paragraph 33 on page 17. So paragraph 33, according to a letter from Jan Holmes to Sue um, Kinghorn, so that's from Fujitsu to Royal Mail, um, uh, dated the 23rd of May 2001, Fujitsu identified the broken audit trail while undertaking an audit um, data extraction for an internal crime manager in the post office in relation to ARQ request number eight. It appears that data for the period um, 8th to the 14th of August was held on four of the tapes. And then if we go over the page, please, to page um, 30, uh, page 18, paragraph 35. 
you're quoting uh, from, um, in part from the letter. On the 9th of May, um, the post office was notified that Fujitsu was unable to source the evidential data requested. Then in the letter you've just referred to, Fujitsu informed the post office of the issue and explained that, quote, the break has arisen due to a combination of events outside Fujitsu's immediate control, but it does mean we're not able to retrieve TMS records for that six-day period or other elements of the audit uh, trail are um, complete. And then if we um, go to page 24, please. In paragraphs um, 40 to 51, you have described for us the attempts to recover and rebuild that missing data. But the essence of it is in this paragraph 49 here. By October 2001, the backup tapes had also been recovered from the relevant data um, center. In order to reconstitute the audit data from the backup tapes, a pseudo audit server was built, which the backup tapes were loaded onto. By December 2001, Fujitsu had reportedly identified that about 66% of the missing data was available uh, on the backup tapes. Remaining 34% was not present and was deemed irretrievable. Gap in audit trail was therefore said to have been reduced from a period of six days to less than 24 hours. Correct. So is that an example of the, uh, uh, the, what you would describe as a limitation in time of the effect that uh, this issue had on the audit trail? Yes. And then if we go forward to page 27, please. Uh, you address steps taken to prevent this happening again. I'm not going to go through all of those. But if we go forward to page 31, please, at paragraph 63, in the preceding paragraphs, you have dealt with essentially um, an escalation of correspondence between Fujitsu and the post office concerning allegations of breach of contract by Fujitsu and threats of litigation by the post office. And the outcome of this was that post office and Fujitsu agreed to settle any claims regarding possible breaches by Fujitsu of its contractual obligations in return for a payment of £150,000. Uh, yes, sorry. Can we turn to um, problem number two, please? omissions in ARQ data caused by operator error. You deal with that immediately underneath these paragraphs here and describe the issue in paragraph 64. So we're moving forwards in time here to 2003. Uh, data had been um, omitted, it was discovered in 2003 in response to three requests and you give the numbers related to Forest Gate and one request related to Ermston. And that's in July and December 2003, respectively. Yes? Yes. And uh, essentially, you go on to describe a series of operator errors that occurred uh, when the operator was seeking to recover data from um, uh, those two branches in respect of those four ARQs. Yes. If we go forwards to um, pages 34 and 35... In paragraph um, 72, uh, you, um, thank you, explain the explanation given to um, the post office at the time of the cause of the um, omissions. Yes? Yes. I should have said um, a moment ago that um, these omissions were picked up by a change in personnel, is that right, um, who was going to attend court. So the person that had originally conducted those four ARQs couldn't attend court. A new Fujitsu employee was brought in to attend court, Penny Thomas, I think, and uh, she re-ran yes, um, the four ARQs and found that um, there was missing data. Correct. And so essentially that was by chance. 
Yes. If the original Fujitsu employee had uh, been the, able to attend court, um, this wouldn't have been discovered. Then we go forward to the conclusion on page 35. Paragraph 74. Um, Mr. Mitchell provided a witness statement in relation to the two branches and he concluded that the omissions made in the data um, provided by a Miss Lowther, that's Nina Lowther, the, thir the first person, the one who couldn't turn up at court, had not been repeated in the data provided by Penny Thomas, and that the latter data was complete in accordance with the original ARQ. Yes. So that's a case where it was revealed and revealed in a witness statement. Yes. Um, the third um, uh, problem, please, the repost lock event of 2008. You describe this at the foot of the page, page 75. Uh, we're moving forwards now to December 2007. An incident was reported by a branch to the Network Business Support Centre. That's a, a poll operation. It was recorded in a peak and referred to Fujitsu. Um, the information was, quote, that a BM stock unit had a gain of £465.73, which uh, did not uh, go to local suspense. When the uh, stock unit rolled over, the local suspense was cleared and the gain was not accounted for. The value of the gain was um, shown on the trading position line on the branch's trading statement. The trading position line should always show um, zero. Now, in the following paragraph, 76 to 109, you set out the history of this repost um, lock event, which had that effect there, um, and how it was first identified uh, by Fujitsu in uh, 2007, and then extensively considered uh, during 2008, during a series of calls, emails, and meetings, culminating in an internal email uh, and presentation to Fujitsu um, employees on the 17th of December 2008. So if we go forward to um, paragraph uh, 110, please, uh, which is at the foot of page 49. This is about when the post office were told. Um, on the 7th of January 2009, uh, and it, a Fujitsu employee notified Sue Lowther of Post Office and David Gray of Post Office about the 2008 uh, ARQ issue via email. Uh, Ms. Warham provided a summary of the 2008 ARQ issue in similar terms to that set out in a proposed witness statement, which you've previously narrated and the various steps that should be taken by Fujitsu and Post Office to address the issue, including, and then you set them out um, uh, between A and um, E. Yes. Given it was clear to Fujitsu in 2008, throughout the course of 2008, remembering the incident had first been notified in December 2007, that the repost lock was an issue capable of impacting on criminal and civil litigation for which ARQ data was being requested and provided. Uh, do the papers that you've read or the briefings you've received reveal why Fujitsu didn't alert the post office to the issue immediately? No. And not seemingly for the first time until the 7th of January 2009? So the evidence we, we've got is that, that it, it was delayed, and I don't know why. The papers don't reveal why? N no. Would you agree that um, as the issue was one which was capable of impacting on criminal and civil proceedings, as is later recognised, it ought to have been notified to the post office promptly? Yes.
Can we just look, please, um, at the email that you refer to here in um, paragraph 110? If we just go back, please. Um, at the foot of um, the page, you refer to the email on the 7th of January, Miss Warham notified Sue Lowther via an email, and it's your footnote 175. Can we look, please, at FUJ um, 00155399? And it's a, um, the Wendy Warham email at 1046 at the bottom two thirds of the page. Thank you. I've left you a voicemail as I need to update you on a recent issue that has occurred and has been resolved but does have some short-term impacts. Would you agree that's being presented by Fujitsu as an issue that's already been solved and fixed? It's only recently arisen, a recent issue. Well, that's exactly what it says. Hmm. Whereas, in fact, this dated from December 2007, didn't it? In the earlier, where we, where we saw the problem, yes, it did. Going back to uh, your paragraph 111, please. which is on page 50 of your witness statement. You say, um, Miss Thomas forwarded uh, Miss Warham's witness statement to Dave Posnett in post office, attaching a proposed um, witness statement. Uh, can we just quickly look at that witness statement, please? It's FUJ 0012-2604. This is the draft witness statement that it's proposed by Fujitsu is going to explain in any court proceedings the repost lock event. And can we just look at um, page seven, please? And at the top of the page, so we can look at the top half, um, in December 2007, an occurrence was reported in one office. This led to a previously unseen database lock where an administrative balancing transaction failed to be written to the local message store database. This generated a generic and non-specific software error a financial imbalance was evident and was subject to investigation by Fujitsu and Post Office. The financial imbalance has been resolved. A software correction was applied across the estate in early November 2008 to ensure that, such an, uh, that any such event generated would be monitored. Testing of the correction has established that the unmonitored error does not occur elsewhere in the system. It's proposed by this witness statement, would you agree to summarize the issue by offering reassurance that testing confirmed that the issue did not occur elsewhere in the system? Yes, that's what it's trying to do, yes. And so effectively reassuring the post office that this was an isolated incident not affecting any other case in which ARQ data had been supplied? That, that would be the inference from this, yes. That's not accurate, is it, on the information that you have been provided with? Because it, because it lasted longer? Yes, well, the, the fix in November 08 is about monitoring the event 
after that time. What's overlooked is the operation of the event from December 07 yeah, until so before, November 08. Yes, I agree. But, but I, in paragraph 110, I thought Mr. Beer, she, um, Ms. Wareham laid out going back and checking some other factors before. Which I thought was the point, point A. Yes, checking ARQs to confirm it, data integrity in the period May 07 to November yes. 08. Yeah. Now, what I don't know is whether that took place, which I think is what you're... And if it did, whether it ever got reflected in a yes. statement. Yes. Because we know what happened is it was decided in the event not to reveal any of this in a witness statement. Yeah, correct. The, the, uh, the advice, well, you're going, the, you might be going, to, it was to remove that, those two paragraphs. The post office lawyer's view, Rob Wilson's um, view, that can come down, thank you, was that it wasn't necessary to give disclosure of um, this incident. Uh, but he said, um, if we're sure that there have been no other incidents, do you know what steps were taken to determine whether there had been any other incidents, as he called them? Uh, no, I don't. Are you aware overall of um, the, the provision by Fujitsu of information of the outcome of any investigation as to whether the 2008 uh, data lock had affected um, any other um, ARQs. So, uh, I, I thought there was. It may not have been this particular problem, but I think there is something later on in our in our answers around having checked the number of ARQs where problems had been presented or not. I think in the case of this 2008 one, I do not know whether previous um, ARQ material had been checked against that problem. And um, what about whether, irrespective of ARQ data, whether data had been checked in that period to see whether the repost lock had afflicted the integrity of that data? Um, I'm unaware of any other checks had taken place. But we do have an email, um, FUJ0015, if we can look at that, please. Uh, 5421. FUJ 0015 Thank you. And this is uh, February, it's the second email on the page, 2009 from um, Penny Thomas. We just scroll up, please. Um, to Dave Posnett in post office. Analysis of the data covering May 07 to end November 08 has been completed. Uh, second line, next paragraph, 27 instances of concern were identified. They've been fully analysed. We can confirm that the locking was caused by contention between the end of day process and a repost checking, a checkpoint being written. No transactions or balancing activities were affected. So I think that answers the first point um, that we were looking at, whether there had been a back check over yes. that relevant period. Um, but that's in relation to 195 ARQs. It's not in relation to data that hadn't been the subject of an ARQ. C correct. And that's what I was referring to, Mr. Beer. I said I thought that we had that there had been some analysis back then. Going, going back to the ARQs that had been submitted. 
Could we turn to the duplicate transactions issue, which is um, problem number four? This is paragraph 118 of your witness statement, which is on page 54. Uh, you tell us in 117, the inquiry, as indeed we did, asked for details of the duplicate transactions incident first identified in 2010 and recurrences of it in 2014 and um, um, 2016. Uh, you describe what the incident was in paragraph 118 onwards. I'm not going to rehearse that. It's quite um, straightforward. And if we go forwards to 131, please, which is on page 61. You um, indicate in paragraph 131 that uh, post office were informed about the incident on the 30th of June 2010. Yes. And I'm going to summarise the, um, uh, the relevant email. It, it stated that Fujitsu had identified the affected ARQs. It had already developed a workaround. Uh, and the workaround would enable anyone looking at ARQ data to identify the duplicate transactions and ensure that they weren't brought into account. Yes. And presumably the idea of that is to reassure the post office that um, the data still had integrity. Um, if you use the workaround, you could still rely on the data. Yes. Uh, if we go forwards, please, to paragraph 137 of your witness statement. which is on um, page 64. Between 137 and 140, um, you refer to the fact that the post office requested a witness statement to explain the issue and the workaround. Yes. I'm, su I'm summarizing. Yes, sorry, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, that subsequently Fujitsu provided such a witness statement. Yes. Have your um, investigations and your briefings and the documents you've read um, revealed to you whether the uh, statements provided by the Fujitsu witnesses in relation to um, data afflicted by the duplication issue true and accurate? So, so I think we've got an example in here. I, I, I find personally the language very, comp very convoluted rather than being very, very clear. But there was, there, there, there is a statement in the witness, in the witness evidence um, trying to describe what had happened with the, uh, with the audit. But your reading of the material, is this right, is that as far as Fujitsu was concerned, uh, the ARD, ARQ data could continue to be relied upon so long as the worker round had been deployed? Yes. And therefore, it was reasonable for the post office to continue to rely on those data. That would be my understanding of it, yes. Can I turn to issue five, please? Um, historic um, gaps in the um, ARQ data. Um, you deal with this in paragraph 153. And I think um, this is uh, new material. Sorry, it's on page 73. Uh, this is new material for the inquiry. So it wasn't something we were asking Fujitsu about that we already knew from reading the primary material. This is a, a voluntary revelation. Fujitsu's identified a small number of documents in relation to the topic. Uh, and you describe um, uh, what happened 
from paragraph 154 onwards. Is it right in relation to this incident that there had not been um, revelation to um, at the post office? Or was it essentially addressed in the course of meetings? The way I understand what um, the emails were saying, which is on the, towards the end of that paragraph, uh, Mr. Gordon was asked to write up and communicate to Bob during meetings, so exactly to the point you've just made. Thank you. And then lastly, please, if we can look at um, um, incident number uh, six. Uh, bottom of page 78. In addition to the five other issues, I understand that Fujitsu has disclosed to the inquiry 102 documents from its peak database, its pinnacle database, and its known error log database. These um, have been identified as records, incident, records of incidents referring to the ARQ process in the context of court proceedings over the page. Many of these documents relate uh, to system changes and support issues. However, there are certain peaks set out below that could be relevant to the issue of ARQ reliability. Uh, but in the um, course of time available, uh, those five, sorry, um, those eight, I think there are in total, um, uh, peaks ha haven't been um, analysed. Is that right? Correct. And does that remain the case? Yes. As far as I know, Mr Beer, as far as I know, yes, it does. Thank you. That can come down. Would you agree that um, that collection of six incidents presents a rather sorry tale of the reliability of ARQ data? Y yes, it does. There were, there were many, as, as is the evidence we've just been through, many um, bugs and errors throughout the um, the time with with uh, with the horizon system in in, in all three of its or well, certainly in its first two incarnations um, so yes I would agree with you and that is one of the three building blocks you have used to reach the conclusion that you have in paragraph 19 yes it is that ARQ data um, ought not to have been relied upon as pre and presented as being a um, uh, an accurate and complete record of the health of the um, transactions um, conducted by a sub-postmaster at his or her branch. Agreed, and, and I would expand it slightly to say, I think just for the overall health of the system, which I think was one of the earlier questions, I think for the sub-postmaster that data on its own is not sufficient. Are you aware of um, a, uh, an experienced Fujitsu employee from the um, SSC being required to give evidence in court in 2006 and Chambers and um, writing after the event a, um, a document that sought to ensure that problems that she had encountered uh, I'll just stop there. So you've disappeared from the screen. Can I check that that, that does not mean that you are not connected? I'm, I'm still here, and I'm able to view everything that's going on in the hearing. So it's... Um, it's only us that's losing out. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll continue with the... I'm putting it, Mr. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'll continue with the question. I was asking you about Anne Chambers giving evidence in civil proceedings, the Lee Castleton uh, civil proceedings um, in 2006. Were you aware of her preparing a, um, a document about problems that had arisen in the um, uh, course of preparation for and the act of giving evidence in those civil proceedings? So in the PAC... There is an. It's one of the um, in the supplementary pack. There yes. is her document that you're referring to, uh, which I've read. Document. 
Forgive me? It's called Afterthoughts. Afterthought, yes. yes. So I have read that document. Uh, can we look at that, please? FUJ 0015 2299. Can we see from the second page at the foot, it's signed off by Ms. Chambers, Mrs. Chambers on the 29th of January 2007. And if we go back um, to page one, um, she deals um, with four topics, the initial approach to SSC staff, um, the review of the technical evidence that had been undertaken um, before she was called to give evidence, um, the disclosure of evidence into the proceedings, and accessing help desk calls. Before um, we gave this to you recently, is this a document you were aware of? No. If I just refamiliarize you with it before I ask some questions. Um, she says in summer 2006, she was asked by the security manager whether she would be prepared to speak to a solicitor. She dealt uh, about a call she dealt with in 2004. Her initial response, this wasn't normal process. He reassured me it was more or less a formality, so somewhat reluctantly she agreed. Subsequently, before meeting with the solicitor, he asked me what his, uh, her availability was in the autumn for the court case. This was the first mention there was any possibility of having to go to court. Repeated assurances that this would all be settled before getting to court proved to be unfounded. Uh, there may be circumstances where witnesses are summoned and have no option to comply, but I was not at all happy about how this was handled. At this time, are you aware of, um, within Fujitsu, how approaches to witnesses to provide either evidence of facts or expert evidence were supposed to be handled? So, so I only know what I've seen in my document because I wasn't there at the yep. time. Um, as, a, as someone in my position now, I am surprised that that was even taking place, where there was a direct connection between a member or a staff and a solicitor representing um, um, a sub-postmaster. Uh, no, it's um, solicitor representing the post office. Sorry, f f yeah, representing the post office. I, I, was I am surprised that that was even part of the day-to-day -day working. Uh, her second issue, review of technical evidence. Mm. Um, when I took the initial call in February uh, 2004, and what she's referring to here is when she was doing her day-to-day -day work mm. in the third line support, she took a call and she administered it mm. on the on the relevant peak. Um, I spent only a few hours on it before deciding that I could not see any sign of a system problem. I only looked at a couple of weeks' information. While in this case I'm now sure that I didn't miss anything, my initial analysis, and my initial analysis was correct, I'm concerned there was no technical review of the horizon evidence between the original call and the case going to court. It's probable that any system problem affecting the accounts would have shown up to post office staff who do, did check the figures very carefully. Since the postmaster was blaming the system for the losses, I think it would have been sensible to have double-checked this within Fujitsu before it got as far as court. I was certainly concerned in the early stages there might be something I'd missed. One thing, so just stopping there, she's making a suggestion mm -hmm. that in investigation and prosecution or in civil cases, one doesn't just, uh, before taking action against the sub-postmaster, um, rely on what was done back in the day, there's a recheck done. To your knowledge, uh, was what she suggested there ever implemented? From my knowledge, no, it wasn't. And I think her suggestions are very, very important. These are serious matters, which isn't just ticking a box. And I think the point she's making here is that given the seriousness of it, um, further analysis should have been done to make sure it was correct and all the data was correct. Uh, once in court, she continues, I found myself being treated as an expert witness 
and answering a wide variety of questions about the system. Although normally I was a witness of fact, and my witness statement covered just the investigation done in 2004. Fortunately, I do have extensive knowledge of the system and was able to fulfill the wider role. But what would have happened if the initial call had been handled by a less experienced SSC person? If there's a similar case in future where the system's being blamed, would it not be sensible to have a technical review of all the evidence at the first indication that a case may be going to court? Someone in that review would be then well placed to give evidence in court. And I think you'll agree, again, that's a very sensible recommendation. A, a very sensible recommendation, and I've learned in preparation for, for uh, the inquiry the change, the, 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 the term expert and witness of fact, which is very, very important. We saw in the 2005 process document that um, a, a distinction was drawn between uh, a person providing a witness statement of fact and, um, a, and a person being called to provide expert evidence. But that document did not precisely delineate the difference between them. No, it did not. And it didn't explain to Fujitsu staff um, the, um, the boundaries of each and the additional duties that apply uh, if you, one is giving expert evidence. Agreed, Mr. Mayor. Agreed. Uh, her third point, disclosure of um, evidence. Uh, Fujitsu made a major legal blunder by not disclosing all the, evidence, the, the relevant evidence that was in existence. I found myself in the invidious position of being aware that some information, i.e. Tivoli event logs, existed, but not sure whether they'd been disclosed or not, since I'd not been party to any of the requests for disclosure. It became evident in court they'd not been disclosed. She quotes from an email from the post office's solicitor after the revelation, and then scrolling down. This suggests that the disclosure of the message store itself was an afterthought, though it is fundamental to the system. I think that reflects something that you've told us already. Yes. I uh, know that for fraud cases, the transaction log and event log are extracted from the full message store and submitted. But surely the full message store has to be disclosed in all cases. Uh, many other files are also archived to the audit servers as a matter of course and could hold relevant information, although security team are not necessarily aware of their existence or potential relevant. I'd like to suggest that a list of these files is compiled so that similar mistakes are not made in the future. Uh, again, sensible recommendation, you would agree? I would agree, and when I, when I read this... Um I was, sadly, again, a word I've used before, appalled that we have a, 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 a solicitor writing to a member of staff pointing out obligations. And I think, as we've already discussed in evidence, the material needed, rightly needed by sub-postmaster, needed to be far more comprehensive, which is what Mrs Chambers is alluding to here. It's essentially a, um, a 2007 reflection of some of the points that you make in paragraph 19 of your um, uh, witness statement um, 17 years later. Yes, it is, Mr. Beer. Uh, and what about calls on peak, which may have been, uh, which may have evidence attached, and any evidence which may have been kept within the SSC? I was not asked whether I had anything uh, that might have been relevant. Uh, as it happened, she didn't. Of course, there may be subtleties to this that I'm uh, unaware of, whereby data may exist, but there's no obligation to disclose it. If this is the case, could any future witnesses be briefed appropriately? The response, quote, no one has ever asked for that before, does not seem to be a good reason for non-disclosure. I think you would agree with those sentiments. Yeah, I would agree with those sentiments, yes. Lastly, help desk calls her fourth issue. Uh, the case highlighted a common problem both in 2004 and now. A postmaster raised many calls about his continuing losses, both with Horizon and MBSC. These keep, uh, kept being bounced, and it took weeks before a call was passed to the SSC. We've heard a lot of evidence about this uh, merry-go-round um, as between the MBSC and um, the help desk. Uh, strictly speaking, problems with discrepancies do need to be investigated by MBSC in the first instance. But where there are continuing unresolved problems, it should be possible to get 
uh, the issue investigated properly. And one of the help desks should be prepared to take responsibility. Personally, I think the Horizon Help Desk is penalised for passing advice and guidance type calls to third line um, uh, because this leads to too many calls being closed without proper investigation or resolution. This is very frustrating for postmasters, though possibly not an issue of concern to the post office. Again, sensible and reasonable advice about an, an earlier escalation within the tiers of uh, uh, the help desk system. Yes, um, I think Ms Chambers has made many, uh, several points in this document which are very sensible and I think here for a sub-postmaster who, uh, who, who, who is constantly calling up for problems, for that not to be flagged as to needs an intervention and a proper intervention, not just passed around, um, is, uh, was wrong. And so would you agree overall that this document lists a series of opportunities, each of which was missed by Fujitsu. I don't know what action was taken from this, but as I said a moment ago to you, I am unaware of whether this has gone into, day, did it go into day-to-day -day operations or not? Uh, we've heard evidence that um, uh, the response to this uh, from uh, Ms. Cham Mrs. Chambers' manager was essentially a pat on the head and say thank you very much, and then they carried on with business as usual. Well, that's wrong, Mr. Beer. That's wrong. If that evidence is accurate and nothing was done in relation to each of these four issues, would you agree that this is a series of missed opportunities? I would agree it's a series of missed opportunities. Thank you very much. Mr. Patterson, they're the only questions that um, I um, wish to ask you today. As I've said already, there will be more extensive questions of you on a broader range of issues when you come back to give evidence um, uh, later in the year. But thank you very much. I don't know whether there are any questions from uh, representatives. I think there are, sir. So might that be an appropriate moment to break until 2 p.m.? Yeah, certainly. Thank you, sir.